Hey folks, this is another video about Data Studio. We're going to dive a little deeper into the tool today and take a look at some of the more advanced features. So this is to accompany my blog post, six advanced features. And we're going to be looking at things like filtering and data sources and creating calculated fields. So if we want to add pages to our Data Studio report, that's pretty easy to do. And it's a nice feature because it allows you to tell a story. You start with maybe a summary page with just your really sort of high level statistics and, and data, and then you gradually drill down through those pages. So we do that in two ways. We can either come up to the page menu here, click this, and there we see we can add a new page. We can duplicate an original page if we want to start there, delete a page if we have too many pages, we can access the page settings and uh, navigate through our pages. There's also a quick menu option uh, just here where you have this little um, summary here showing how many pages you have already. You can drop that down, see all the pages to navigate to them, move, uh, change orders, etc., and just very simply add a new page there. So if I click that, I get my page six, a nice blank canvas to start with. So we can easily add a data source at page level and then also apply filters at page level so that any charts we add to our Data Studio dashboards are all driven from that same data source with that same filter applied. Uh, so that's super useful and quick when you know you want to um, pre-filter that data before you start displaying it. So we'll show an example here of how to just um, bring in mobile only data from our Google Analytics account. So I've uh, navigated to the current page settings, which you can find in the, in the page menu, current page settings, and also by right-clicking in, uh, in your canvas. I'm going to select a data source. I'm going to select my web data. Uh, that now applies to the whole page. I'm going to add a filter, include, and we choose um, the dimension we want. So we'll, we'll, we'll search for device category. Equals, we'll leave that as it is. And I'll type in mobile here. So that will now filter to mobile. And we'll give it a good descriptive name, which is always a good practice, mobile filter page level, sorry. Uh, let's create that. And now we have that filter applied to any charts we drag into our into our page. So if I change the dimension just to show you how it's working, uh, again, we'll, we'll pick device category and we should see mobile only now. And there we go. It's displaying mobile only data on our page. So here I have a simple line chart in my dashboard showing the sessions over time broken out by these three categories. And I'm going to show you how to add a date range filter and a control filter so that the dashboard becomes interactive and the user has control over what they see in this chart. So it's very easy. Date range is here and the filter control option is here. So let's add one of each. We'll drag date range onto the dashboard. That's it. That's as simple as it gets. Uh, the filter control will drag on and make it a little larger. And we'll now go and modify the uh, filter control to show exactly what we want to show, which is device category again. So I come and find device category. And now you can see it's given me that uh, those options there. And I, I will probably get rid of the show values in this case because I'm not so interested in that. Um, and let's go and see in action. And we can see now if I um, choose different date ranges. So for example, if I choose uh, last seven days, then you'll see a different picture of the data, just seven days worth of data. Uh, if I choose last quarter, then again, you'll see um, a lot more data now. And I can also now um, remove certain categories. So that was getting rid of mobile there. Uh, let's choose desktop only. Now you can see that if I want tablet only. And so that's the uh, date range filter and the control filter. There's one last thing on the control filter I'm going to show you, which is uh, we can specify in the style here whether we have it to be a checkbox list like this one here, rather, or uh, an expandable drop down menu similar to the date range. So let's change that to the expandable, show you that in action. Um, it's now just shows up as a, as a drop down menu. Okay, the next thing I'm going to show you is how to make elements report level or page level. And that means 
does that item just show up on the one page we're looking at or does it propagate through all of the pages in your dashboard? And this is a really nice feature so that if you uh, want to apply a consistent header or some sort of formatting, for example, across all of your pages of your dashboard, you can do it very quickly. Uh, or if you wanted to display a certain KPI uh, on every single page because it's such a key one to give context. So it's a really handy feature. So let's drag and drop on a uh, just a rectangle formatting bar, just so I can show you. Uh, let's make it a nice color. Green in this case, it stands out. So I just added that green rectangle at the top, some just some formatting, very basic. And if I cycle through the pages of my dashboard, I think you'll see that it's not there. It's not showing in any of the other pages. Uh, if I right click on that item, it comes to the very bottom here and say make report level. What that now does is that applies on every page of my dashboard. So if I now cycle through the pages, you'll see that um, every page now has that nice formatting bar across the top of it. So, you know, a very handy feature. And should you want to change it back to page level, uh, you can always do that by just, again, click right clicking and coming down here to make page level. Okay, let's talk about calculated fields in Data Studio. I'm setting up a little example here, which just has a very basic table, which I've duplicated down here beneath, so we can keep a copy of it. And it just has the medium, the number of sessions, and the number of goal completions for each of these mediums. And I would like to just have a final, add a final column here that shows me the percentage. So what percent of sessions resulted in a completion? And I'll also just show you how to convert all of these uh, medium strings so these text values to uppercase just to make it look a little neater and just to show you how that works. So let's click on the table here, bring up table properties, uh, come to data source and click on this pen that's next to the data source, which allows us to edit it. Uh, then I come into the uh, editing section here. I'm going to click this plus button, it's blue plus to create a calculated field. And we're going to call this goals to sessions ratio. Uh, it, it's given an ID by Google by default. You can change it if you want, but that's fine to leave it as the default. And we're going to do goal completions. So if I now uh, see that it comes up in the menu there, I can hit tab to save me typing out the full thing. Uh, and we're going to do that over sessions. And that's my field. So I create field. And you'll see it now. It's now there um, in row one here with a little FX to show me it's a, it's a calculation. And lastly, I want to change this data type from number to a percent because I know that it's a, a percentage. So I click percent and I click done. And then we can now add that metric into my uh, table here. So I'm going to search for it first. I call it goal to. Okay, it's not there. Let's go and take a look at why not. Goals, I call it goals. Okay, uh, here we go. Let's go find, try, try that again. Goals to, there we go. So goals to session ratio. And, and there it is. It's now added that column for me to show me what percentage of the sessions resulted in a, in a goal completion, which gives me a little indication of the quality of each, of each medium. Now, the other thing I mentioned was just quickly changing this to uppercase. So let's take a look at that. Again, edit data source. I'm going to add a custom field. We'll call this uppercase medium. And the formula this time is just the formula upper and then medium. And click create field. And then again, you see that it's there as a text type, which is fine in my in my fields list now. So I click done, click medium here to change it. And let's type in upper case medium. And you see now that it's changed all of the text to uppercase. And you can see that compared to the original down here where it was all still lowercase. So in a very brief uh, little example there, that's that's calculated fields in Data Studio.